Yes. I try that. Um, you're saying that you're, you're wondering why, that like, how it's not going to be that somebody <coughs> is going to want to be bigger and want to be better and want to dominate. But in the world we live in, and the way the world has always been, we have classes of society. We have the upper class, the middle class, the lower class. In a real society, just living on earth with the earth, what do you need to be better than? You, you're not trying to prove anything to anyone. You're just living your life on Earth in an equal society. There is no need to be better than something because there's no levels of goodness. You know what I mean? There's no middle, upper, higher. There's just life and living. You don't need to be better than anything. Why would you want to? But, just but, but, that's, but that's the behavior of a human body. Like, it's, you just so, can't take like a pure like, <laughs> or behavior. The I, we're I, in. I Even if that is true. You cannot take that physically out of a human body. You can't take that behavior out of a I've never experienced that behavior. Someone's always going to want to be better than someone else. Don't do that. Human competition. If you're brought up in a competitive environment, like I can run faster than you. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, we run. So if I do run faster, does that make me better than you? Now, people do that because they get little recognition. Now, you're going to have to take my word for this, because I haven't seen this today. But when I was a kid, people used to sit on a telephone pole for a week to break the record. Did you ever hear that, anybody? <laughs> Why do they do that? Because they're trying to say, look at me, goddammit, I exist. Very few people get recognition today. So you say, that was a nice thing you did. But most people don't get recognition, so they stand on their hands for four hours or to get recognition. This is the illness of our society. Every kid should be rewarded. Every kid should be encouraged to take steps forward. So you had a question over there. So what I'm hearing is that ultimately for this thing to work, speak up. Ultimately what I'm hearing for this thing to work is that the human condition has to be completely so to get this thing to work, the human condition has to be removed. Like whether, whether you're in a specific culture, whether you're in a different society, the problem is that there's always a need to thrive or to excel. To excel, like whether whether everybody is given the same opportunities, the same goals. Kids are given credit in school. If you do something the way the teacher likes it, you get an A. The person who wants something, they get a C. That makes jealousy and envy right away. So in the schools of the future, we encourage every kid to work. In other words, I wish I had a drawing board to show you, but when kids make a terrible drawing, the teacher hangs it up. I never did that. I say the drawing, and they draw people like stick figures, and I say to the kid, does this guy eat anything? Because I made him too skinny. And right away the kid adds mass. Don't let a kid do a childish drawing and don't hang it up. In other words, inform them as to how to improve that. I take four-year-olds and teach them how to draw like 20-year-olds. Because the artist himself has learned to draw over a long period of time and doesn't always know how he does it. He says, I guess I, it's nature. I've been drawing for a long time. But as a bad communicator, if you still don't understand me, we don't know. A lot of people think that somebody invented language. They say the reason for the life is to communicate. That's not true. What happened? A guy banged his elbow. And he went, ah. Oh. Then he banged his knee. Went, oh. Then he ate something and he said, oh. And language is an extrapolation of all those sounds over many years. Nobody's ever sat down and invented language any more than anybody sat down and invented a wheel, which they tell you in all schools today. Somebody invented the wheel, that was the beginning of a machine age. That's not true. When a log fell over another log and a guy pulled it, it rolled. And, ah, oh, that's good. Well, if there was a stone in the way, that stopped the whole thing from turning. So they shaved the bark off, and eventually you had two wheels on the end. But nobody ever sat down and invented anything. That's all bullshit. A person takes an idea so far, another person adds to it, and gradually you get an automobile. But nobody has sat down when I made an airplane. Well, when you climb a hill, I don't know you, but you look for the slight flats. If you don't step on the flats, you slip. 
So after you live there 10 years, it looks like steps. Hear you back there. It looks like steps. But no, when he moves, he cuts out steps. But he doesn't come to a hill and say, I need steps to get up. That's not possible. Nobody invented the propeller. There are many things that grow on trees that spin down on the ground. I'm sure you've seen it. There's nothing that man ever thought of that was original, including the wireless, including Tesla. I can tell you where he got it if you really want to know. I can tell you where ideas come from. They don't come from nothing. They don't come from a guy thinking about it, all that bullshit. They don't know. Artists themselves don't know how they do things. So I used to take children and give them a stick and they make zigzag in the sand. And accidentally, that zigzag looked like Abraham Lincoln. You know what I mean? So the kids said, that's Abraham. I said, don't lie to me. You just went like that and I'd have to He said, that's right. You know, everything, kids pick up a pencil and they make all kinds of lines. If it happens to look like a bird, they put an eye in it. You understand? They're little liars. There's a question on the way back. Yes, sir. We talked about how it would be a really good thing if we had soldiers eventually, you know, working and, and learning and building things that would help the society. How can you get to that point when, at this point in time, in, in the foreseeable future, there's a necessity to protect our way of life? How could you keep and maintain that way of life without having to defend that with force? And other people, for whatever reason, want to destroy that way of life, that you live or that they live, you know, it doesn't even necessarily have to look like Did you watch the Did you watch the Okay. How do you protect this way of life that I'm talking about no, without no, soldiers? this way of life. You're talking about today, how do you protect today's way of life without soldiers? Yeah, I mean, if you want how do you protect today's way of life without okay. soldiers? Okay. Soldiers represent the establishment, not the majority of people. Police represent the establishment not the majority of people. If the majority of people did something against the establishment, the police would put them down. The police are the tools and instruments of the establishment. If policemen in the future, if there are any to your transition, if you're driving your car and oscillating a lot, the police officer will say, can I help you in any way? Where are you trying to get to? So I have a terrible headache and I don't know where they'll help you. Uh, where did you learn to drive? Let me see your life. These are bullies, not human beings. Like I said, most soldiers are killing machines. They're not even human anymore. And I'm sorry about what I'm saying. But we want to raise human beings on the planet that care for the environment and one another. Anything less than that is not worth saving. Yes. Your website says you have, I think, 21 acres down here in Florida. Mm -hmm. Are you? You, you had land down in Florida, correct? Mm -hmm. yes. Are you trying to go forward with a model of this civilization by making this? Are you it's starting a research this? center. We've done books and videos. We're going to have a TV station there, an internet station. We're training. We're going to be affiliated shortly with universities there, training um, architects and engineers in this new way of thinking. Um, but are we're you doing actually a whole trying to build a Not, not. We, well, we are taking on more people, but for specific things. But we. we do want to expand in another location for the first city that yeah. we're aiming for. But before that, we'd like to do a movie. We think you really can't take the people of today and move them in a new city and have it much different. We want to do a major motion picture that will go around to the whole world showing life in the future. But every single movie today on the future is detrimental. It's like the free enterprise system extrapolated into the future and all these restrictions and all these machines killing people. We want to show a positive future to pose a direction for people to work towards. And then we want to do flashbacks of how we get from here to there to help answer questions for people.